this morning, a little Milwaukee style home. Can you pray with me this morning? Embracing a loving God of so many names, we thank you for bringing us together once again. Be with us now as we worship through you and we hear the words that are about to be spoken. Let us be the gifts to one another and let us be that guidance through that gift. Let us be open through our hearts this morning, but even so through our minds and that we're the receptors of the words that are about to be spoken. So I ask now that you would touch my lips of clay and mold them into the words that need to be spoken this morning and the words that come from my mouth and the meditations that come from each and every one of our hearts. May they ever be acceptable to you. In Christ we pray. Amen. So those words, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Schlemiel, Schlemazel, Huffs and Pepper Incorporated were first uttered on primetime television, July 27th, 1976. Now some of you probably are not old enough to remember that. I know I, w I was, I was oh, too old. But it was television's comedy at its best. And it took place right here in our own town of Milwaukee. The land of cheese, brats, and of course, beer. Gotta have the beer, right? Laverne, Laverne DeFazio and Shirley Feeney, two best friends and roommates from high school, coping with their dates, their neighbors, and each other, bringing the late 50s and early 60s Milwaukee to life as they worked as bottle cappers at Schatz Brewery in Milwaukee. And it was called shots because they couldn't take Paps because it was already taken. Of course. And they couldn't take Fister as some of those names kind of ring through that series. But believe it or not, Schlemiel, Schlemazel, and Hafsen Pfeffer are real words. Yes, they are. They are real words. Schlemiel and Schlemazel are two Yiddish words and terms used often in a comical or slap happy way. So Shlemiel in Yiddish translates to someone who is clumsy, like spilling or making a mess or always drawing that short end of the stick, so to speak. And then Shlemazel is the one who comes on the hard luck, who's probably the one that gets fallen onto by Shlemiel and deals with being on the bottom of that pyramid when you make a pyramid. And then there's Hafsenpfeffer. Hopson Pfeffer actually is a German stew. And I didn't know that until I actually started writing the sermon series and did some research. I knew the other two were real words, and I didn't know that Hopson Pfeffer was a real word. And it's actually a German stew. Now, I'm not sure why Gary Marshall created, um, the creator of Laverne and Shirley, put all this together, but I guess just those sayings together made people just put a smile on their face. So over the next four weeks, we're going to have a little fun with the sayings from Laverne and Shirley, along with relating it to who we are as Milwaukeeans. In the morning scripture, we hear in Titus to be careful as a church. And you can say that serves in many purposes, such as if you're a Shlemiel or a Shlemazel, that we need to be careful as human beings, not to get in an accident or create hurt to ourselves. This particular scripture is also a faithful saying, and that these things that I will do, and that these things that I will get you become an affirmation, or it becomes that the people who believe in God might be careful when they are maintaining their good works. Be careful. Two words I heard a lot growing up. It wasn't that I was accident prone or clumsy. Okay, well maybe I was, but not always. But just a little. But it seems that if, as if my parents, and especially my grandmother, loved to tell me, be careful. No matter what I was getting into, and I think it was something of the 50s and the 60s growing up, that that was just one of those words, be careful. I mean, has anyone ever said that to you before? Have you, did anybody experience that growing up? Grand grandmothers especially, be careful. <laughs> of course we have. And then, yeah. to be honest about it, we definitely, there are times that we need to hear that. Mm -hmm. The bad thing about hearing someone say be careful is when we hear it, most of the times, we ignore it. Mm -hmm. 
I heard that constantly. It's like, yeah, 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 you know. But first, both as individuals and as a church, we do need to be careful. Or thoughtful is a better way of saying it in the good works that we do as individuals and as we do as a community. Those who might remember who Mark Twain is, I don't go back that far. (laughs) Some do, I don't. But for those who remember who he was, there was a saying that was very interesting. Mark Twain says that it's not what he didn't understand in scripture that would trouble him. But it was the things that he understood after reading them. The very thing that gives us most of the problems is simply not being careful with the things in our life and including our words and our actions. Kind of takes us back to the last series, the four agreements. Be impeccable with your words. When Paul wrote this letter to Titus that we heard this morning, he was addressing mainly the problems that existed in the churches in Crete. Now you're thinking, creep, why all the way over there? But that's what he was addressing. And you might say that this was a church that was careless and immature, sometimes even having lack of organization. There were several in the church at the time who opposed this doctrine. And they could refuse, and they, they could refuse what they heard and be careless in the options that they so-called were doing that pertain to them as individuals as well as others in their lives. But our friend Paul, what he was really saying is that if you hold back, you're going to get left back. And as an individual and as a church, that you should be supportive to all of those ministries of the church that take care... And Let me start that again. Say that again. That you should be supportive of all of the ministries within the church, and especially take care of your pastors and your leadership. And by doing so, it it builds not only this bond, but it builds that strength. Some folks say that, why the pastor, or why even the support of the church? It's because we're told that by God, we're supported through them through these ministries. I'm hoping that you feel that way about your pastor, but, um, but God tells us that we take care of our own and that through, that through taking care of our own, we start receiving and we start reaping those spiritual rewards and we experience that growth in our lives. Some say that supporting these ministries comes through our financial gifts as well as our gifts and our talents. And when we support those ministries, we're supporting ourselves at the same time. These are the times when we, me, there are times that though, we are those schlemiels and those schlemazels and that we need to be careful. And as we experience this growth, as we hear Paul tell Titus to be careful, we too at the same time to be thoughtful of things that are being done in our own lives. Being careful or thoughtful becomes the importance of doing good work in God's eye. Have you ever heard that before? That by doing good work, you're doing that good work through God's eyes. There are so many things that we can do as individuals in our lives, not only at home, but out in the community with our families and our communities. So. Some of you volunteer your time and talent out in the community, which is awesome. I know just from reading Facebook, all the things that a lot of you do. I mean, what did we do before Facebook? I mean, we didn't get the news. I mean, we had to wait until we saw people on Sunday to get the gossip, you know, and, you know, go on Facebook for the daily news, but in a, but in a good way, you know. I know that Julia works and does stuff at Summerfest, and then from there she goes right into the fair and... We don't see her for a while, but she's busy, but she's out there doing, doing her work. And I know Jerry, little does he tell you that, was it Wednesdays? He plays in a, in a group for seniors. They go to various nursing homes and they, they um, play music for the seniors. 
that's part of ministry. It's outside the church ministry, but it's still part of ministry. But through that, it becomes the ministry that we have here. You know? It's all, it all forms that mesh. You know, and then others of you give through your gifts, through your tithing, or through your talents, or the things that you do. I mean, if it wasn't for Ken, our front yard would look horrible. And if it wasn't for Alan, the backyard would be the jungle of, of the swamplands, you know? But it's through the gifts, not only our giving financially, but our givings of our talents and what we do. This past week, uh, as you, you were teasing a little bit earlier, I was, um, I was interviewed um, by Fox News um, regarding Hurricane Harvey. Yes. And I have to tell you, you know, coming from California, Fox is not one of those stations that when you get a phone call, it's like, oh, great, Fox News is calling. Oh, yeah. my God. You know, be, you know, how they treat the community. And I'm like, so, but I got this call, and it was, we saw your Facebook post on the church page about the efforts that we are doing for Hurricane Harvey for our sister church um, at Resurrection in Houston. Can we come by and interview you? Sure. Why not? I know that's right. I'm not going to tell them that we're an LGBT church. <clears throat> they haven't figured that out by everything else. Oh, oh well. <laughs> so they came. They were like here within 30 minutes. And uh, a lovely uh, reporter and uh, asked all the questions. I'm sure most of you have seen, hopefully have seen it. But um, got done with the interview. And I said, I just have one question. I said, why us? There are so many other churches in this town that are doing things. Why us? And she looked at me kind of a little puzzled. And she goes, well, she goes, A, because you're a church of diversity. And I said, well, that's refreshing to hear, especially from somebody from Fox. And she goes, well, we're not like, we're just an affiliate. So I was like, okay. <laughs> but, um, but that we were diverse and that we were inclusive and that we were vibrant. All the things I keep saying, that you keep hearing, that vibrant, inclusive, that progressive, that VIP church that we are. And it was refreshing to hear someone from outside of the, of the I call it the close-knit community, um, that sees this and saw that, okay, yeah, we're an LGBT-based church, but we take everybody. <laughs> We take the straight, the, the this, the that, whatever. We are, we are the. And I kind of joke around. We're kind of the grandfather and the grandmother of the whole movement. We are. Um, and I say that seriously. You know, when I hear, you know, when I hear that. But having a new a newscaster that just comes, you know, and our F, and showing that those efforts that we have are not being that shlemiel or that shlemazo when it comes to those efforts. But did you know that there are not there is not one church in existence without some type of problem. And as long as someone attempts to do the good word of God, they face the opposition. Paul said in his letters that the importance of good works through our stability is that we're doing that through the works of God. And that the things that we do are commanded through scripture that focus on the ministry based on scriptural principles. If you want to see a church crumble and be filled with divisions and find itself on a decline, I can start naming churches out there, but not going to. But if you want to see the impact of a church, then look around to all the things that become fruitful and the obedience and that we are that people are careful we are a fruitful church there is so much that we do as individuals as a church last week alan mentioned when he was calling for the offering and it kind of stuck in the back of my head throughout the week and as i was preparing my sermon for this morning it popped back in my head that this church started out as a starter church well, by no means are we a starter church, let me tell you. I mean, we may look like one right now, but we're not. But through that growth, you know, um, and all of that, for Milwaukee MCC to be where we are 
is progress. You know, we're beyond what they call the starter, or you know, if you're if you're a baker, you know that 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 um, foundation. If you're baking bread, that um, that yeast and that 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 um, culture. You know, we're beyond that, but we're not quite fully baked and risen. We have lots of room. I mean, we are that place that, you know, we are that original affirming and accepting and reconciling church that we hear everybody else that's becoming to be. We wrote the book. But I always say be careful. But be careful that we don't let our heads in flight that we do that because at the same time, we still have lots of work to do. Sometimes we have to stop being that shlemiel or that shlemazel and start building and growing. I think everyone knows kind of my model. My motto is double and double again. I think the board's kind of sick of hearing it, but it's so true. You know, if we double just once, that would solve a lot of the things that happen in our community. I won't be getting grayer and grayer every month when I see financials and things like that or wondering why we can't start certain ministries because it takes people. You know, a lot of people have been around this congregation a long time, and I'm sure some people are exhausted because a lot of you did the work in the days. But it takes us to take that extra step and maybe get a little bit more exhausted as we go through and we become beyond the starter. You know, out in the community over the last year, you know, I, I hear the commentary that, or the feedback, from A, my colleagues, but I hear it from the community. It's like, wow, Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church, you guys are doing great things. You know, I have to say when that thing aired last Tuesday, my days are all screwed up, when that aired, I was told it was going to air on the 5 or 6 o'clock news, so I'm like waiting for 5 o'clock news, waiting for the 6 o'clock news. Nothing's there. See everything else. See the Salvation Army. And I'm like, okay, well, we got preempted by the Salvation Army. Got preempted by this. I'm like, okay. And then I had just, I guess, force of habit, DVR'd all the news on Fox through the evening. And I was um, doing some work um, at home, and uh, my phone rang, and one of my friends up in Madison calls, like, you're on the news. I'm like, oh, that was like 10, 15, whatever time it was. I'm like, oh, yeah, oh you okay, I guess, I guess we, we did, she did. Keep her promise. You know, I'm thinking, because I'm thinking, my back was like, yeah, Fox News, they finally figured out who we were, and then we're not going to be oh, on the news. Stop. And um, so 10, 15, yeah, there we were. Yeah. You know? And um, then, of course, <coughs> the text messages started just flowing. It's like, mm -hmm. yes, I had to, so then, of course, I had to go back and pull the DVR and, and watch it and all that. And I have to tell you, the gentleman who was the, um, the video photographer, um, after we were done with the interview, he was around here for about 15, 20 minutes. I just saw Julia make a comment with the cross. He took lots of interior and exterior pictures, so you, can't, you couldn't miss us. So, I mean, if you haven't figured out who we were by just the interior and the exterior, then we're not doing our job. But, um, but again, it was getting over that clumsy stage in our lives. You know? You know, a year ago, think about it. If you were out in the community and you said, oh, I go to Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church, you probably got this look of, huh? What? I used to get, oh, you're still around? You know, you all told me a year ago we were the best kept secret in Milwaukee. Well, I don't think we are anymore. I think we've kind of, we've hatched, we've blossomed. You know, I go out into the community now, even into the non-LGBT community, and it's like, oh yeah. So we've kind of gotten over that shlemiel and that shlemazel stage in our lives that we're doing the work. You know, they call it being small, but they call it being small but mighty. Yeah, we're that small and mighty, but let's be big and mighty. There is so much happening in our lives. Believe me, I know what my schedule is. I know when people try to schedule something with me, it's like, okay, do we need to go four months out or six months out? Because you look at you, you look at your schedule, and it's like, oh, I just can't fit this in. But we need to take that ownership in our lives, and we need to think about getting over that clumsiness. 
being who God created us to be. And I think over the next three or four weeks that we're going to have a little fun with doing things, you know, and, you know, doing it, doing it our way. You know, and making those dreams come true. Someone shared with me um, about a month ago, um, not, I'm sorry, not even a month ago, about two or three weeks ago, I was at an event for the LGBT chamber and um, happens to be a, uh, somebody who knew our former pastor, uh, Reverend Lou, back when, and um, I was introduced to this person for the first time and has seen me in the community, has seen the work that has been done, and she goes, you remind me of a lot with what Reverend Lou did back in the day, but you're doing it your way, and you're making the dreams of the former folks who ran this church, even going back to Reverend David, who started this congregation 30 years ago, making those dreams and those visions that they had of being that starter church come true and go out into the community. But it was interesting to hear the comments of, of the things that the former pastor's visions were. And this person knew Luke somewhat well. Um, and she just uh, ranted and raved and she goes, and she goes, and I see the things that your church is doing now. So we, 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 we still have a little shlemiel and shlemazel in us, but at the same time, we, we've gotten over that, you know, but we only make it better. So as we make those dreams continue to come true and be, go beyond where we are, it's a little bit of Milwaukee in us. You know, when I travel, you know, I take us with us, you know? I take a little bit of Milwaukee with us when I go to Dallas every two or three months. And, you know, it's kind of, it kind of gets to be the joke. It's like, what? No pretzels, no beer, no cheese curds? It's like, you know, it's like a little hard to take that on the plane, but, you know, we ship. But, um, but they know, they know who we are. You know, I, I use Cathedral, as, Cathedral of Hope as an example because that's usually our connection, but, Another comment was made over the last week as I um, had a conversation with one of the associate pastors and she, she just, um, I've, I've known her from California, but she made a very, very, very true statement. She goes, it's so nice to see a church of 4,000 and a church of under 40 be able to communicate and work with each other. Yeah. That church thinks very highly of this church. Not just their pastor, but the entire church. And, you know, it's nice that when folks come home, I mean, I would say in that congregation, there's a good handful, maybe two handfuls of folks who were raised here in the Milwaukee area or in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And a couple of them, when they come home to visit mom and dad over the holidays, they trek and they worship with us. And we've had some of those folks with us over the course. So there's that connection, that bridge. So we're not just stuck here in Milwaukee, we're out there. So I hope over the next several weeks we have fun with this sermon series and that we, we, we get beyond that and we start seeing those dreams come true. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right.